Hi, I'm Diana Matlock. That's me in the corner. Welcome to my adventures in art. You may be realizing about now that there seems to be no correlation between what I'm telling you and what's going on in the box up there. Well, I'm still learning the tech stuff, and when I first recorded this video, I didn't get the sound recorded, despite a fancy new mic. So, for the first part of this video, you will be getting my voiceover, thinking through what I may be telling you, <laughs> or I would have told you had I, the mic been working. So anyway, the um, picture that we're painting today, uh, the back part of the picture is painted with uh, regular liquid acrylics, so it's very flat. And then the front part, which is what I was trying out today, is painted with heavy body acrylics. And now I've painted some with oils and I wanted to see how heavy body acrylics compared in that respect. All right, so let's go over the colors I'm using on my palette. The first one used to be called Viridian. This is now Thalo Green, it's a blue green. The next one is Cadmium Yellow, then Indian Yellow, one of my favorite colors. It's a transparent. Then this is Permanent Red and this is Quinacridone Magenta, which used to be called um, Violet Red or Red Violet. And then the very last is dioxin, dioxin purple. And of course, I also have titanium white on my palette. So here we go. Let's get started. I put this in double time because a lot of it is just me painting a sunset. Now, I'm telling you about the brush. This is a very soft, it's actually a watercolor brush. It's a number 10 filbert by Grumbacher and you can tell it's a filbert by the shape of the head that rounding there here we go okay so right here I'm gonna add some titanium white to just give the impression of where the Sun went down because the Sun's already down we can tell that from the colors in the sky we just need a little white right there to show where the bright where it more, where it went down. Okay, and now I continue painting the sky, just blending the colors with that very soft brush. The toughest part about painting a sky like this is not blending out all the colors. Otherwise, you just get one smudge of a similar color all the way up the sky. It's important not to, um, you know, just leave some of those strokes in there. It adds details, kind of like where the clouds were. Um, I had decided to add a little white in there. The original picture I painted didn't have it, but well, you know, you get to do whatever you want to. It's your canvas. So the other thing I need to remind you is make sure you paint your edges because as, as you're painting a sunset, it's going to be awfully hard to try and mix those colors and go back and paint them again later. So paint them as you go, especially if you're doing something that's really blended.
one of my favorite tools, my fingers. Okay, so I'm going to add a little water here because I want it to flow a little more easily and just um, get into the texture of that canvas. So the back of it, I want it to stay just Viridian, just that phthalo green. Um, with lots of blue in it because it gives the impression that it's farther back. But now that I'm getting towards the bottom of the canvas, um, I'm going to start mixing in some cadmium yellow. I'm also going to turn it around so it's easier to get to um, with that lip there on the, on the easel. So here we go. More painting of the background. So to continue the illusion of hills with the strokes of the brush, I'm making smiles because the canvas is upside down. So when I paint in a smile motion, it's going to be um, the correct orientation of L when the canvas gets turned right side up again. So, um, uh... Okay, we're back to normal speed, but I've frozen it here because I need to let you know that I had done all this painting with the wrong camera on. So. But the mic is fixed, so I'll continue from here. The other thing I wanted to tell you is that um, paints um, come in not just different hues, they also come in different transparencies. And that's marked on every single container of paint you're ever going to buy. Um, watercolors are pretty much all transparent as far as I know. And so I don't know if this is true for watercolors, but it is true for um, acrylics and it's true for oils. And you're going to find a square on there somewhere. Two extremes are the clear square, which means that it's transparent, which means you paint it on there and it's pretty much going to show anything that's underneath and it's going to act more like a filter. Um, and whatever's underneath is going to in influence the application of the paint. The, um, the dark square means it's opaque, means it, it, it doesn't care. You, you put me over something, I'm going to cover it up. Hence, our, my love of titanium white and why I call it the white out of the world. Because it will just, you know, if you don't like something, you just paint over it with titanium white and try it again. If you're not at a place where you can actually wipe it off or rinse it off your, your uh, canvas. 
And then there are two more symbols and I shall find them. Here they are. You're going to find a square. Sure you are. There's one. You're going to find a square that's a, a white, a clear, an empty square with a diagonal line through it. That means it's semi-transparent. And then you're going to find one where it looks like a diver's, diver, diver's flag. It's the um, square and, and one half is dark and one half is white is clear. And that is semi -opaque. Daisy, what I realized is that all of the paints except titanium white that I purchased um, were all transparent colors. Great, except I don't want it being affected by what's underneath it. And um, you can kind of see, uh, not so much anymore because I've really painted over it, um, The that is going on somewhat in, in that leaf right there where some of it's just the texture of the canvas and there's yellow spots coming through and, and that's the that is the other thing that I talked about that I want to uh, is the texture of whatever you're painting on um, canvas of course now if you're painting on linen it's going to be a much finer weave it's not going to be so toothy as um, uh, as over-the-counter can't stretch canvases in the multi-pack um, the other thing that uh, I've seen wonderful artists like um, Michael James Smith, um, he takes a, a board and gessos it and sands it, I think, three times. Um, and so I have some boards and of course I have some gesso. So at some point I'm going to try that and see if maybe that will help with some of the, 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 this effect that, that I'm getting where it's just, it obviously it's not flowing. And that's part of the problem. I'm, I'm, I expected this leaf part to look more flowy, <laughs> which is ridiculous because these are heavy body acrylics. They're not going to flow. They're, gonna, they're not going to flow like the, the liquids do. Um, they, and so um, you need to use them differently. So uh, I had started with the back leaf and have been painting my way forward. And um, I'm going to do one more leaf here. They are by flowers, so there are the in the disc area. The flowers on the disc are little tiny flowers that, and then the petals are actually the ray flower. Um, so they are, it's a different kind of flower on the outside, and that's what makes up the aster family. Okay, um, what I've got going here looks like a grand mess, but you know. That is some of the thalo blue. That is some of the brilliant blue, which to me looks cerulean, and I don't know the difference between cerulean and brilliant. It's a pretty blue, though. And then cadmium yellow all over the place. This is the emerald green, because I just got a little nervous about, you know, the last time I mixed this up, yeah, it was awfully um, olivey, which is okay, but I wanted something else. It surprised me. I wasn't prepared for something quite so olive. Um, but I did need it to contrast from the viridian in the background. So it worked out okay. So it, it's all good. So um, I am going to put one more leaf here. And before I decided on, on the structures and the shapes of this plant, I went looking at pictures online about um, what... what what do they look like? And so, it, it, since it is the second largest plant family in the plant kingdom, name it. You, it <laughs> you're gonna find it. Um, color included. So, um, I, I liked this one and I thought I would try it. And, um, eh, it looks alright. You know, for, it's one of those things where practice, practice, your execution so yes and um, I do have the air conditioner air conditioning on in here so 
there's a bit of a breeze, so this stuff is like drying out super fast. Um, so I'm how we learn to write. Um, we use easels to get the right perspective because if it's down then there's a tendency to, um, if, you, if you're not looking straight on on your canvas there's a tendency to get a little ca cattywampus. I get cattywampus anyway so it, it and it's just more comfortable for me to pick it up. Now um, I also will use my pinky to stabilize my hand, if I'm, especially if I'm trying to do a straight line, or if I'm trying, actually, whenever. I use my pinky a lot. <clears throat> now, the other thing you could do if you need to keep your hand steady, and I can't remember, it's, it's, it's a dowel, you use some kind of dowel, and I can't remember what the technical term is in it. You set it against the easel, bring it over, rest your hand on that. This one's not quite long enough, obviously, but I wanted to show you how that worked. And um, so it would go, <laughs> so you would have it like that. And it would, you know, it's a little um, scaffold for your hand. So. So I'm going to put some of that brilliant blue in there, which is going to make it lighter. But it's going to add the opaque um, characteristics that I want also. See? Right there. See that, See that transparent nature of that, um, of um, the phthalo blue? Ooh, that is way too cerulean. The phthalo blue and the, um, actually the cadmium should be the pink. Unless I used Indian. Indian is transparent. I don't think I did. I think I used cadmium. So there should, maybe it's just, maybe it's just, um, I think I added some water. That would do it too. Out, oh, there we go. Out and come down. Out and come down. Now for the side. I'm gonna have to go out and Just blue, just right on, just using blue right there. And I'm going to 
और स्टिकी I can see where you can get some fun. Um, you know, I can see where this might lead itself really well to knife painting. And at some point, maybe I'll attempt another knife painting. Knife painting, that, that's a skill that I don't yet own. Um, I've done a couple of them. I've got one that I'm very proud of, mostly because of how hard it was. <laughs> and. It's the first painting I ever did that gave me a migraine. Usually I paint um, when it ends. It's a way for me to try and get rid of my migraine. Or at least take a, a, a break from the pain. until I was, you know, nearing stuff all painting is, is putting the right color in the right place. Thank you, um, Wilson Bigford for that. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. Now I'm trying to load the paint on one side of the brush if I want that color on, you know, but I got to make sure it's not on the underside. There's just a little smudge of yellow on the top of that stroke. Now I really don't want to touch the painting, and I did. Oh well. just on the outside edge. Just a little bit of yellow. Like 
when it's dry, I'll take that those chalk marks out. Okay, so this one. Oh, we need some highlighters. Oh, you know what else needs some highlight? You right here. Yeah, because all of your little petals are all folded up over the top. Actually, they're you're not even your petals; they're your sepals. That's the um, the leafy green parts around the. Um, uh, Wash this really well. I don't want to leave it to soak in the water, but I could because it's a plastic handle and it's a cheap brush. Um, but I really don't want that paint to dry in here, and I've I've um, really abused this poor little brush. I got the paint way up too high. You really don't want the paint any more than um, you know two thirds high on the brush. This one will be pretty well part of our flower. Hold on. Just a what I've realized is that um, <laughs> leggings don't have I can get some more. Did I get purple? No. When it comes to it, I'll need a little touch of phthalo blue. Now, ah, yes, brush that I used for the petals is, I love this trouble with the paint coming off in the uh, uh, I'm gonna go straight at nine, at twelve, and six. I'm gonna come from one side, get the edge of that petal, press down hard, and as I come down, come towards the disc, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lighten up. Red 
pull up as I come down towards the um, that little oval that I that um, circle that I painted uh, with the chalk rather and now this one from here all the way up that's three o'clock here comes nine o'clock load the brush slowly and straight towards the desk. And now do Six o'clock like I did, 12 o'clock, one on either side. Six o'clock. I need more paint on there. Get a nice end to that petal and pull, pull up and pull in. And now I'm going to fill in starting by my three o'clock and you wanna go straight out from that center. Just like that, we've got a daisy starting to emerge. And this is where the heavy body paints, I think, really shine is the, you know, the textures. Which is what I anticipated. That's what I predicted would happen, is that these heavy body paints, true to their name, be like meringue frosting, keep their shape. Actually, most frosting, not royal icing does too. Buttercream's a little softer. side and come this way. Put a little too much paint on there. Oops, and come in straight towards the center die. Fortunately, I can paint over that with the next petal. Did a horrible, see? I tend to have a tendency of getting the paint way too high up on the bristles. Two thirds. Two thirds. You know, you don't, sometimes you cover up what's underneath, sometimes you don't. I would much rather 
take the time and paint whatever's underneath there. Even if it gets covered up, then not paint it and have it show through and everybody go, oh, what happened? Shouldn't there be a something, something? That was an edge I didn't want to really take take out, but I did. Now it's all mon kind of monochromatic. I'm sure there's something we can do. So on the blossom, kind of got a, a, a curved edge and we're all coming down towards that point that point right there okay. don't worry if it's not even on the bottom we're actually going to go through and paint that over paint the sepals over, believe it or not. So that's great, except that it looks a little... I'm going to add some shadow to it. So what I'm going to do, and this is, I talked about I was going to add some blue. Here's where we add some blue. There's some blue that hasn't been mixed with green yet. Oh, that's a lot of blue. I just want a shadow color, a very light, Light shadow color. Kind of like what's under here. All right, I think I'm happy with that. I'm probably going to have to mix up some more. Um, and I'm going to come straight out. I'm going to follow the path of those daisies, of those gray flowers, what we call petals. I want a little streak of something. I'm going to do another one of the petals. Okay. Get that blue out of there, although the blue wouldn't be too bad. Here we go. Back into the white. I'm going to do shorter petals this time. Right on top. Following the same, oops, that's okay. Oh, I really want a, a definite edge to these shorter petals. Maybe the brush was too wet. Because I did rinse it. I could have just wiped it. Now, I need some more cadmium yellow. 
for that disc. And it's going to be a bit domed. No, there it is. Probably don't need that much, but. And I'm going to tap. Oh, you know what? I want to do that in white first because that's really. I want it to be a little more uniform. So let's do that in white first, even though there's some yellow down there already. I'm okay. I'm all right. So I'm tapping it because I want all those little peaks. I want that roughness. Lots of paint. Lots of texture. Tap, tap, tap. When I stop getting peaks, I go back and get more paint. right there. And fill in that whole oval and I'm going to bring it up. Now, now that I've got the white on there, now I'm going to get the, now I'm going to wipe that off, no more water, and I'm going to go get that yellow. You know, the yellow seems to be a little thinner consistency. This is where I might break out that Indian yellow after all and um, darken up the far edge of that disc. To create a bit of a shadow. bit like working with putty once it starts to dry out a bit. So let's try a little bit of that Indian yellow on the far side. Just a tiny, just a tiny bit. a little dab. See the difference it should make a really nice little shadow in there. Just on the far side. And actually I'm going to bring it around the bottom. Curve upward. Nope, not too much. Need to be able to control where I'm putting those dots. There. Yeah. Might want to mix that with a little cadmium yellow have an intermediate color and have that go right there next to it. So it 
doesn't look like there's an actual line. There. Oh, kind of nice. All right. Now, um, I want to add a little more shadow on those petals also. So this time I'm rinsing it, but I'm going to make sure it's nice and dry. And some more of that phthalo blue and with the white. And I just want a little shadow. to that disc. Especially on the edges. It's a little too much shadow on some of these. Oh, and let's paint those sepals back in. Which means we need to try to match that green. Oh, the dark green. A lot of blue in it. Good enough. So we're going to come up and just paint those sepals back in. can be on the outside of the flower. Sure it can. All right. So when it dries, I will take those chalk marks out. See, I can pretty much rub, rub them out. Um, if your painting is dry, don't do this if you're painting. I put a little water on my finger and it takes the rest of them out right away. But I'm going to wait on those because that's not and now it's time to sign it. Why not? Right down here. With our Indian yellow and our cadmium yellow. <laughs> and a little green. Oh, we need some help. <laughs> It is not showing up very well, but that's okay. I don't want my signature to be... Oh, that's way too bright. Come on now, you can find a happy one. After all, cadmium is opaque. Okay, that's still pretty bright, but sign it. D M. 20, 21, oh, awfully thick one, there you go, thank you so much for joining me tonight, I hope you had a good time, thanks for all the comments in the chat, even though I, the video isn't live, that I was live in the chat with you tonight, so have a good week, take care of yourself, Take care of those around you and the ones you love. And I'll see you next week at 7 o'clock.